Okay, uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to uh, present today uh, and to meet you all online. Uh, my name is Olga. As Yanis presented already, I am a communication designer and student, MA student uh, of New Media Art Department at Polish Japanese Academy of Information Technology. And uh, the topic is between the words emotional punctuation in the digital age communication. Uh, in communication design, uh, every small detail uh, matter, and uh, even a single punctuation mark could convey uh, multiple uh, meanings, uh, communicate emotions, or change its function depending on uh, context or media. Uh, today, I will talk about punctuation in text and um, mainly visual communication in the digital age. Uh, more specifically about how punctuation marks are combined in some novel ways, uh, thereby providing a completely uh, different semantic meaning. They are also frequently used even without textual context as independent elements. Even when used within a text, their original role changed to such an extent that they can modify the overall meaning of a sentence. And I divided my presentation into three parts. Uh, in a, a first part is dedicated to conventional punctuation, uh, the most frequently used and well-known marks and symbols. And the second part is about emoticons, uh, pictorial representations of facial expressions mainly. And the third part uh, is about unconventional punctuations. Uh, excuse me? Come over to you. Okay, uh, some novel or widely, uh, not widely used marks. So uh, punctuation in its conventional meaning help us, uh, helps us to structure or organize our writing for better communication using spaces, punctuation marks and other typographical symbols. Uh, in sum, uh, it worth noting that um, the well-known and literally invisible sign uh, space it was not used uh, and probably not used in uh, many of the ancient script. Uh, for example, uh, the well-known Bostrophidian writing, uh, which was, uh, which didn't use space at all in between sentences and uh, words. Uh, and every new line actually started uh, from, uh, was written in the opposite direction. Uh, the modern punctuation was elaborated to, uh, in the 19th century. Uh, nowadays, uh, the use of punctuation marks uh, varies depending on the media and target audience uh, for, for which actually the certain text is written. For example, uh, scientific writing uses uh, strict uh, rules and uh, actually a casual unstructured arrangement of uh, science is unacceptable, especially when it's going to mathematical formulas, for example, or some scientific statements. Uh, on the other hand, in poetic literature, uh, poetic pieces of literature, uh, the author's arrangement of punctuation marks uh, often does not follow established rules. Punctuation in this case is used by the author to convey the emotional meaning of the piece, uh, improve the interaction between the author and the reader. Uh, it, it's uh, some punctuation marks uh, might be more expressive than others. For example, uh, according to Adrian Frutiger's uh, classification, punctuation marks were divided into three main groups depending on their main purpose. Sentence structuring science, expression science, and reference science. Expression signs include uh, exclam the exclamation mark, expressing affirmation or exclamation, the question mark, in, uh, expressing question or a doubt, and quotation marks, expressing different types of quoted speech. It's impossible to ignore uh, the fact that communication uh, through written messages is deprived of physical, personal communication when we can see a person, their emotions, feeling, feelings, or uh, other nonverbal signals. In informal writing, we often replace all this by words, punctuation, emoticons, emojis, pictures, voice messages, uh, etc. Concerning punctuation, for example, two opponents in a dialogue could use an excessive number of some signs, uh, a lot of uh, 
exclamation marks, question marks, or ellipses, for example. Mm, some punctuation marks uh, changes its meaning nowadays, in texting especially. For example, a full stop at the end of the uh, phrase might, might be perceived not just as the end of it, but makes the message being less sincere, uh, according to Celia Klin's study, or convey negative emotion. Uh, a full stop at the end of the message in texting is uh, known as a dot of hate. The dot has acquired yet another meaning, another role in design works uh, by uh, Unmundo Felis, a public initiative that uh, unites uh, cultural activists and graphic designers who aim to disseminate social and political messages through different media. Mm. In this example, all the dots in the font Ariel were changed to swastika symbol. Uh, punctuation marks are um, used by designers in uh, book covers, especially if these books are dedicated to typography. Uh, for example, uh, here you can see on the left uh, a strong graphic by Herkul Balin for a book cover. Next one by, made by Alan Fletcher. And uh, the third uh, book cover for Shady Characters, a nice book, uh, interesting book about uh, history of some punctuation marks. One more beautiful example is a book of poems, uh, which was uh, its contemporary design, but the book was first published more than 100 years ago. And it's illustrated um, by punctuation marks, uh, silk printed and made on crafted paper. According the, uh, to the description of this book, punctuation signs are markers of pauses, interruptions, asides and stops but they also point to intonation, intent, and emotion. Speaking of less frequently uh, used symbols and signs, it's worth mentioning that some symbols, albeit not used today in everyday writing, are still widely used by the graphic designers uh, to prepare books, corporate identities, posters, uh, and uh, other graphic materials. Uh, due to their unusual, sh unusual shape, and semiotic meaning of the past. Uh, they have become quite popular nowadays. Uh, a good example of this is index, manicule, little hand. Uh, the symbol represents a point in hand, which literally means pay attention to or look at the direction of, po direction of pointing finger. Uh, the modern function of this sign uh, in many graphic design projects is to catch the attention of the viewer, reader, consumer, or any other person staring at the sign when uh, passing by, for example, thereby inviting them to enter to a cafe. Mm. In the broad sense, uh, the meaning of this punctuation sign nowadays is the same as in the 12th century, to pay attention to something. Uh, punctuation in logotypes uh, typically conveys some semantic information, such as, for example, a uh, personal logotype of uh, type designer Martin Meyer on the left, uh, who creates fonts families consisting both of serif and sans serif fonts. And here you can see a handshake of uh, serif and sans serif manicules. And, and another good example is um, a book cover for a uh, scarlet letter, uh, the, the book, uh, the novel from 1850 and the contemporary cover design. Uh, the, the pointing hands perfectly reflect the main topic uh, of the novel, social shaming and stigmatizing. And coming to the next part, um, in text communication, especially texting. It's uh, that is partially limited by the set of characters on the keyboard. People invented a new way of conveying emotions by using combinations of punctuation marks, uh, letters, symbols, uh, that is by using emoticons. The uh, first digital emoticon uh, was used in 1982 in a mail by Scott Feldman. He uh, put a smiley face and a sad face in, into his email. And uh, emoticons, particularly faces, uh, communicate emotions in a very literal way. Uh, I checked uh, as much sources as I could find on the internet, in my personal messages, and found out that the widest category is actually a happy smiley face, uh, which was a good, nice discovery, very ple pleasant discovery for me. 
and uh, smiley face actually is very recognizable symbol and widely used everywhere in visual communications, labels, magazines, street signs. Uh, here you can see a few examples of such signs. The system of signs, of such signs, has uh, become widely adopted in digital communication. We could not just uh, show emotions, but control their intensity. The rule is easy, more braces, more happy or excited you are. I, I was trying to find emoticons, not just in texting, but in more formal emails. For example, here you can see some emails from my professors. Mm, I, I could not find anything except of happy smiles there. And uh, the most frequent meaning of these emails was uh, to cheer me up, to show friendly feelings or uh, probably the satisfying level of uh, my work. And um, uh, the system, um, I, I was uh, trying to find uh, emoticons also, probably this is my favorite part, is um, emoticons which represents uh, faces of uh, celebrities, uh, famous uh, writers, musicians, game uh, characters. And my favorite one, probably the Cyclops, is a very, very minimalistic typographic portrait, just consists from one dot and one brace but you can uh, recognize it as a cyclop. Probably less symbols is used in a um, emoticon, which I call lazy smile. It's just one brace, even without dots. And it, it's interesting that actually uh, these emoticons, we could say that um, they appeared uh, not in the form we use them today, but they appeared earlier than uh, before the mankind was able to send electronic messages. Uh, for example, uh, use of emoticon in article typographic art uh, on the left, which was published in 1881 and illustrated with four pictograms symbolizing melancholy, indifference, surprise, and joy. Uh, text art is also existed before the era of personal computers. Uh, for example, in this 1948 article, Keyboard Art, uh, Paul Hadley provided a creative masterclass on creating own emoticons using the usual typewriter. Uh, in the logotypes of these uh, two type foundries, one company and one uh, conference, you can easily spot a smiling face resembling the famous emoticon smiley. With the emergence of emojis, they become popular not only as a supplement to the text, but become a text itself, if we, I could say that. Not uh, one of the examples, a book from the ground, which is written in emoticons and other symbols and logotypes, where you can still see actually the punctuation marks, which serve their conventional role. And uh, one more beautiful example is a uh, book Genesis. It's, uh, it doesn't use emoticons, but it use, uh, it's, total, it's written in pictograms and logotypes. It's a biblical creation story was translated into these pictograms. And um, the third part, uh, the emergence of texting is just a single example on how human languages are constantly evolving. <clears throat> and in this part of the presentation, I will uh, talk about unconventional punctuation marks, demonstrate the examples of such marks and present my uh, own project. The starting point uh, that commenced the creation of my project uh, was a bookshop receipt. Uh, with, which I get from the bookshop, actually, with some words of gratitude, accompanied by the following unusual uh, emoticon or a symbol, which you can see on the screen. Obviously, uh, such an emoticon um, makes this uh, receipt uh, more friendly for me. It's like showing that they were happy that I actually bought uh, something in their shop. And I started to search more on these uh, different signs, which we don't usually use in our writing, and found out uh, some of them, uh, put them to, into the timeline, which you can see now. During many centuries, 
uh, people actually try to express their feeling and emotions through different marks, constantly experimenting with shapes and curves. Mm, the first sign in my timeline dates to uh, 1580s, and uh, it was a rhetorical question uh, which was made by London printers, mm, which looks like a reversed question mark. Uh, the earliest presented here irony mark dates to 1668, and uh, it was um, it looks like an inverted exclamation mark. It was not, not used very widely, but the idea of expressing irony with a punctuation mark uh, become quite popular even until now. Uh, here on the, this part of the timeline, you can see some examples of these signs. And more recent Sark mark from uh, 2006, uh, and one uh, by underwear, from 2007. However, these marks are, are non, uh, not actively used nowadays. Uh, and in 2017, a novel punctuation system was proposed by Austrian graphic designer and typographer Walter Pohac. Uh, in his book, Typogies, he describes philosophical and linguistic ideas that provide uh, a foundation for creating a completely new system of science. The system includes 30 symbols that serve to represent different emotions and human moods, such as, uh, for example, sympathy, solidarity, curiosity, skepticism, and so on. Uh, all these are typically uh, difficult to express in text communication and in the words of author um, that are conveyed instantly when speaking face to face. Uh, the most probably widely known mark over uh, in this part of the presentation um, is Interabank. Designed in 1962, it represents a combination of uh, exclamation mark and question mark combined uh, in a together in one glyph. Uh, here are the few examples proposed by uh, the author of this sign and uh, Typotox uh, journal readers. And there are also other new punctuation marks available online. They aim to address narrow tailored purposes in the text communication, such as again, sarc mark, uh, symbol of sarcasm, showing sarcasm, and uh, legal marks. Uh, coming back to the project typologies, uh, I would like to uh, uh, mention that it was a great inspiration for uh, my project and uh, which, uh, in which I asked my friends to contribute to the design of emotional uh, punctuation signs, which in their opinion could be used in uh, texting. Uh, the participants of my project Between the Words uh, come from different uh, professional backgrounds. There were linguists, designers, and computer scientists. Uh, but I would say that uh, these differences in uh, background uh, as is assumed to have no impact on the quality and uniqueness of uh, provided science. Accordingly, each participant provided a description and uh, example of their sign. Uh, these are drawings of the signs which I got back from my friends. Uh, some of them are more abstract, some are more pictorial. Uh, essentially, this project is a more a creative exercise on a possible ways of expressing human emotions in written communication uh, by means of graphic sign. Uh, all the resulting images were post-processed by me to create a single system uh, compatible with Font Ica by Maciej Polczynski. So after some sketching, I got the final set of marks, uh, which consists of 12 symbols, Hanover, Serenity, uh, Shame, Uncertainty, and others. And also uh, the examples uh, provided by my mark creators, uh, they actually uh, repeated the meaning twice in the text itself and actually in the punctuation mark. So we removed the, um, in the final examples, we remove repeated parts and here you can see their descriptions and their uh, actually examples of how to use their mark. This project is rather an experiment, but not a direct statement. Uh, in my opinion, each newly invented sign needs time for evolution or some strong need in society, for example. Uh, and of course, for our society now, it's implementation in digital technologies. 
it should be recognizable by a group of people and it should exist in different type face which we use typefaces which we use uh, be accessible as well for example in texting we value minimum time delays so probably we will not search for some hidden characters rather we will type uh, the characters which we have on our keyboard to make the process faster of course, it's opposite. It might be opposite when it comes to uh, experimental art, uh, when it comes to artistic books or artistic projects. Uh, I would also add that I enjoy very much the result and the process as well as my friends who are real creators of this uh, science. Uh, this project I briefly presented today was published just in a small amount of copies, uh, but other works of mine, as well as works of uh, other students, typographers, uh, graphic designers, um, could be found uh, on a page of a future text project. Uh, it runs by uh, my academy and uh, a lot of other universities and institutions from all over the world and it's an academic research platform uh, focused on text-based communication across cultural international and multidisciplinary fields so uh, i invite you to uh, check to access free publications and check our repository uh, using the link you can see on the screen thank you very much for your attention i hope you found this information uh, useful for you Thank you very much for this very nice talk and very interesting project. Um, I'm waiting for questions by the audience. Uh, in the meantime, uh, question, did you thought of doing some kind of psycholinguistic experiment where people are exposed to different uh, alternative punctuation marks and you uh, check what kind of emotions or feelings this uh, produces? Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, actually I'm now working, uh, I, I'm switching a bit to asemic writing and wanted to, to, to use, uh, wanted to use uh, languages which uh, existing actually, but maybe they are not, uh, we don't know what, uh, how to encode them or languages which we don't speak and I wanted to con connect it with the sound and the visual, uh, visual to see how picture people react and how they treat it, how they treat the meaning without, when they cannot read the text or the sign, they can just see the shape and hear the sound. Okay. And uh, another question, have you thought of um, doing the Spanish way of indicating the beginning and the end of a segment which uh, is uh, annotated, assigned with some uh, feeling? Or is it, uh, is it for you the expression of an emotion or a feeling always something uh, that happens at the end of a sentence? No, of course not. Uh, in texting or in uh, Instagram, Facebook, a lot of social media, you can see that people insert uh, emoticons, emojis, everywhere they think that it means something for them. For example, after a specific word, so this word exactly they want to point out that they are very happy or for example sad, especially exactly about this, uh, you know, moment of writing. So of course not, it's not just the end. Here uh, the students, uh, my friends who provided this science, mainly they put it at the end of the sentence. But maybe it's because we get used to that dot and the end of the sentence is the end of the phrase. So probably they, they, uh, they didn't use this science a lot. They just elaborated and the first intention was to put it at the end. But when we use it in texting or uh, in social media, we put it everywhere we want. I have a question by Dan Harbour. Hi, this is just a quick comment and it's slightly silly, so I apologize for that. But this is my, where's the camera? This is my 2016 book from MIT Press. And kind of without them noticing, I managed to sneak a new punctuation mark in, which I think is kind of useful. I hope you can see it. There is a question mark there uh -huh. uh, with a comma underneath it. Uh, I, I, don't have, know you... I have it on is my that... timeline. 
You have it on your timeline. Yeah, uh, let oh, me show. Show that again because it, I find it really irritating to have to choose between having uh, here exclamation and... comma and question comma. Oh, it's under the it's under the chat box. Ah, oh, right. Oh, that's really good. Okay. Oh, cool. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'm. Uh, I'm sure that there are much more signs. I started to check also some personal projects which for example a, a specific designer or person only advertise on its uh, own page so it's not easy sometimes to access all of them but i added them to my collection uh, step by step uh, take pictures outside on the streets or for example collect uh, different receipts everything where i could spot you know some interesting details oh, okay i'll keep my eyes peeled really interesting thanks very much Thank you. And maybe I could add that um, the examples you give by Hervé Bazin uh, are just from one book called Plumont l'Oiseau, which is a highly ironic book. So he's actually making fun of all of this. It's not a serious proposal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. None of these signs are really serious. Uh, but uh, they are also, also, I found out that it was proposed to Unicode, this set of signs. Uh, and they look, uh, they are, have fancy shapes and a nice meaning. So not uh, yeah. only serious signs are presented here, because I'm a, a graphic designer, not a linguist. So probably I just search for interesting shapes and interesting meaning. But it should not be only serious signs. But thank you very much for uh, mentioning that. I have a question by Kevin Donnelly. Well, Olga, that was a really interesting uh, presentation. I was just wondering, what, um, how far do you think these are likely to be adopted? You know, what would influence that sort of adoption? Because most orthographies are mature. These symbols aren't going to be in Unicode. Do you think they're most likely to uh, be available or be used mostly on perhaps t uh, phones, that sort of thing? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, I think, uh, when we experiment with this sign, we didn't uh, think that these signs will be used. I just, uh, we just wanted to see what people tend to express. Nice. But probably, you know, what we have now, uh, we, we communicated even without the signs at all. But, <laughs> and now we have a lot of them. Yeah, I think, I think to use them, mainly you need to have them somewhere. For example, or, it's, or the meaning is super specific that you really need this sign, so you will search for it. But in a texting, we use what we have on the keyboard, what we, can, what we have access to. So probably some of the signs could be used. Maybe I, I see that the irony mark is uh, the most popular to invent. So probably it's very hard to, um, when you don't see a person, you don't understand if it's irony or if it's a, you know, just serious thing. So maybe irony marks, as, as we see, as most of the people want to invent it. So probably this is the next thing too. <laughs> yeah, need to get the ball rolling. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. And a comment by Eve Danziger. Uh, hi, thank you. Hello. Um, yeah, um, I just I'm I'm a little bit struck by uh, a connection between what you presented and the the earlier talk uh, where um, the speaker said that if the medieval philosophers had needed um, a smiley face, you know, if they were interested in that kind of thing, they would have had one. And um, uh, I, I was a little bit struck by the, you know, how many smiley faces you had, but also by the fact that before there were emoticons in a, probably the 1970s, there was a bit of a, a, a sort of um, moment for uh, printed or, or written smiley faces. I, it, some people here with me will remember that, but uh, the emoticons sort of picked up on something that was already being invented, the smiley face in particular, and then of course, all the affordances for other possibilities. But it's interesting to me that indeed, there was a sort of cultural historical moment when, yeah, we, we were starting to invent the smiley face in any case, quite apart from type, you know, digital typography. Thank you very much for your comment. Yeah, you know, the smiley face, probably it's very easy to spot it, uh, and it's recognizable, uh, in different cultures, because you, you can imagine, you can see that if somebody is smiling, usually it means something good. So the person is smiling, this is a happy person, so probably people started to use it. 
for advertising for all the different, I don't know, text or uh, anything else to show that this is friendly, this is something happy, that is nice. So we can see the brace here and the two dots, it's eyes. So it's very- I believe that it first, first was used by McDonald's, that it was a sort of, there was this have a nice day, I don't know, I'm, you know, for Maybe, those who probably. remember <laughs> those days, it was, it was initially an advertising thing and then it was, it became very popular. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, thank you very much, Olga, for this very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me uh, to present here today. I enjoyed this. Thank you.